Hello there. Today we're going to be taking apart an oil filter. I uh, recently bought a brand new uh, Kia vehicle and I was told to only use original uh, Kia and Hyundai oil filters. It said uh, change the oil every 7,500 miles. Well, if I'm going to be doing something like that, I want to make sure I have a good filter. So I went and bought the original part. Now I know it says Hyundai, but it's the same thing as you'll see. So this is the part number that's compatible with the car. If anybody here wants to take a look at it. This is for the uh, two liter uh, four cylinder multi-port injection engine. So uh, I already cut it open. I haven't looked inside yet. So let's uh, take a look and see if this thing's any good at all. All I did was cut it open. So starting off here, it looks like we got uh, plastic covering it, which that's always a promising sign now, isn't it? Usually the higher end filters do that. And according to the bump on the front, Hyundai Kia Motors made by Man and Hummel, Korea. Now Man and Hummel, they, uh, they make all kinds of filters. They make the purulators, they make the wicks, they make uh, the Napa filters. These guys make all kinds of really high quality filters. So uh, I, I would rest assured that we're in pretty good hands here. So I guess I'll start off here with the front got five ports of entry for the oil. They're actually pretty fairly good size holes. The gasket here, although it is kind of a smaller gasket and it's, it's, a, it's a little bit recessed in here, as you can see, it's kind of pressed and tucked underneath there. So it's really hard for it to pop off. So I don't think you'll have an issue with it. It is made out of a uh, nitrile rubber, as you can see, but it's a pretty good gasket. It, it, it's a little more flexible than some other ones I've seen so far. So there's that. Take that off, and that reveals a silicone anti-drain back valve. So that's good. Silicone, you know, from the uh, silicon carney, as we all know, is uh, obviously more better than rubber. That's right, more better. So this will be a lot more better at uh, withstanding uh, extreme temperatures, whether it be cold or hot. And this thing is, this base plate here is freaking heavy as hell. Jesus. That aside, pull out the filler. Oh my golly, look at that, eh? <laughs> Jesus, this thing is built like a brick shit house. Wow, hey, now don't worry about the uh, apprentice mark here. That was me trying to handle this thing. There's the only bit of uh glue that I see that ran over is right here, but that's nothing big it's actually it's like a rubberized stuff too so it's not just you know hot snotted into place and forget about it. looks like it's pretty good quality glue there are tons and tons and tons and tons of pleats on here we probably got well over 100 pleats here i'm not going to sit here and count all through them but uh if you want to do that you can do that on your own time inside if you can see see that logo in there the, the hyundai logo that's supposedly supposed to tell you that this thing is genuine and not fake. Apparently these oil filters get uh, counterfeited all the time. So this was their little mark to do that, make sure it's genuine, but guess what they started doing? Everybody's doing them now. So I would uh, venture to say you shouldn't buy these off of the, uh, the uh, Crapazon or the Flea Bay. Get these either from a dealer, and I know the damn dealer is probably gonna charge you freaking 15 bucks for the damn thing. This thing was $8.99 at AutoZone. Now, so far, looks like a pretty damn good filter for $9 out the door. I'm pretty happy so far. So, you know what you're going to be getting at AutoZone. They're not going to give you the counterfeit stuff. So, either a dealer or a reputable auto parts store, I would avoid Amazon. So, there's that. On the back here, we got a... Uh, it's a... Uh, Yes, there's a valve in there. It's actually, it's an actual spring too, metal, metal spring. It's not some plastic piece of crap. We got metal end caps and inside there, can we, can we, can we see inside there? Let me get you a light. There we go. You can see inside there, we got uh, all metal core tube. No uh, mesh backing on this stuff, but the, on the uh, filter media, but uh, it is the synthetic type. It's not just the uh, standard cellulose, it's the synthetic type. So it's a good filter media. 
And this is all built into one unit, as you can see. Let's flip it to this other light, get it in there real good. As you can see, it's kind of like in a cone shape in there. Kind of weird, but hey, it works. So there's that. What else we got in here? Oh, look here, more. And this is just a, a spring with a hole in it. This, they stamp these out on a, on a stamping press. Basically, sits below this, and it just kind of keeps everything suspended in there. It's, think of it kind of like a cushion, almost. Keeps it, you know, if, if I just throw this back together, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be rattle trapping around in there. We don't want that. And then it's got a hole cut in it for the uh, oil to go straight through into the emergency uh, bypass valve there, as you can see. But uh, there's not really any sharp edges on this. They actually did a fairly good job uh, stamping this stuff. No burrs or anything like that. Nothing nasty. Seems pretty decent as far as uh, quality is concerned. And the case thickness. Let's go ahead and do that. And, oh, <sighs> well, damn it, Tyler, you had one freaking job. Take something out of my damn toolbox, put it back. I know it was in this drawer. Where did it go? Well, now we've got to go on a quick hunt real quick. All right, we're back here. I have finally managed to ask him, hey, where is it? Oh, uh, I think it's out in the garage somewhere. No shit, Sherlock. Why would you leave it in the house? Freaking plonker. Anyway, let's take a look here. Uh, we're not going to do inches. We want to do millimeters. So give or take roughly 50 point. So about half a uh, millimeter thick here. So we're doing pretty good. That's actually uh, about average. So we're good on that. There's the, there's the inside here look for you. No uh, rust or anything nasty like that inside. I'll give you another look at the uh, casing here on the outside. Don't mind the uh, apprentice marks. There's some, uh, well, it's gotta be Korean, I would, I would venture to say. Um, basically discarding instructions, made in Korea, don't put it in your trash can, you big dummy. There's a lot of data information right there. And we're back to it. So, in summary, for $9, for $9, are you really going to find a better oil filter? For your vehicle, that's even OEM. I mean, I mean, this is an OEM part. This is this is what they're putting on their new cars. Nine bucks? Come on, man, that's nothing. That's a freaking sword dick deal right there, man. Now I know why people just say, well, I'll just stick to the OEM filters. This is why, because they're built like brick shit houses. They're not cheap. I'll show you what a cheap filler is coming up here soon. I think uh, you'll be uh, a little shocked to see how bad some filters can get. Now, we're not going to do that in this video. That's another video, uh, video. Well, thank you all for watching. Keep it between the ditches.